Hi guys, Webdunce here. In this video I want to show you how to make the signet ring that I made in a previous video. The previous video was a speed model just a run through then uh, it was time lapsed but in, in this video I'm going to show you how to make that ring. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is uh, create a new file and we want to make sure that we choose the small objects millimeters uh, template We're going to go into the front view and uh, create a circle and it's going to be for a size 10 ring so that would be 19.76 millimeters of diameter. Now uh, when you look up ring sizes you may come up with a slightly different uh, you know, like maybe 19.85 or something. Uh, it, it's okay it's, as long as you're close to that number. Um, I want to make sure that the curve seam is at the bottom and so we're snap or we're dragging the curve seam from the left from the quad on the right to the quad on the bottom. To do that, you're going to need to make sure that you've got O snaps turned on and the quad snaps turned on. Um, and I, I need to say here probably that this is only one way to create a signet ring in Rhino. It's not it's not like the way. There is no the way. You know, there's no one single way to make any ring in Rhino. So. Don't, don't take this as the only way. Uh, we're going to give this ring a, a thickness at the bottom of 1.2 millimeters. So I'm going to draw a line snapping from that bottom quad. I'm going to hold shift and uh, to make it straight and go out in that direction and I'm going to move it down 1.2 millimeters. I'm going to make another line from the side here going up and I'm going to push it out 1.9 millimeters uh, in this direction. So we're going to give it a thickness of 1.9 millimeters on the sides. All right, we're going to connect these two curves with an arc blend. And it's important that you click on the correct ends of the curves that you want to blend to. If you click on the wrong ends, you could end up with a result like this or something even different. So you need to click on the, it's important you click on the ends of the curves correctly. Uh, you can leave these here if you want, or in this case, I'm going to delete them because I'm satisfied with that with that result. Okay, next we're going to put a circle for the top, and there's two ways we can do that. In the speed model, uh, I made a circle uh, from the top down view of 15 millimeters, and uh, I moved it up. You have to make sure you have project turned on for this, and. Uh, got it set up like that. And alternatively, you can actually just make that circle directly on the top with project turned off. You can snap to it and then type in 15 and it'll make that. You have to make sure you're in the perspective view when you do that. Okay, but either way we want this 15 millimeter circle at the very top of this ring and then we want to move it up three and a half millimeters. And also uh, make sure that the the curve seam should be at the side, that's fine. Okay, uh, there's also two ways, there's probably multiple ways, but uh, there's at least two ways to create the, the side here. And I'm gonna mirror this over and show you both ways. So the way I did in the speed model is I drew a line here and gave it a slight angle. And then using curve blend, not, not arc blend, but curve blend. I blended between that line and the arc down here. And I think I pulled this point up a little bit. I seem, I like, uh, like to do that. And then uh, I may have adjusted this curve because you can adjust this curve um, however you need to using this technique. So once you get it how you like, you, you can just go ahead, if you want, you can go ahead and delete that curve and then you join these two curves. Okay, alternatively, and I'll show you this on this side here, uh, we could have uh, grab the curve extend uh, tool uh, drop down and click on this here. Click on this arc, which then lets us extend the arc, uh, but then click on two point and snap to the quad on the side and then hit enter. And this automatically, uh, you end up with a single curve on that side, re ready to use. 
So you don't have any control over the curvature. It, uh, the, the command determines that for you. But uh, for this type ring, this gives you a very good result. But this is what I did. Uh, this is how I did the curve in the speed model, and it also gives you good results. I'm going to mirror this across to the other side, but we are not going to join these two curves. Sometimes uh, it would be good to join these two curves, but in this case, we want to leave them separate. Going from the right view, I did another line uh, snapping to that top circle, also at an angle, and I did another one at the bottom here, holding down shift, snapped at the very bottom of the ring, and going out straight. And then I blended those with a curve blend as well. Uh, I pulled in the side here like that, but you could have left it uh, like this or made it fatter. Uh, you can use, you could experiment with different shapes to see which one gives you the result you like. I'm going to mirror these both over and just talk about you know, why you might choose one over the other. So with this curve that goes in, um, you end up with a more rounded bottom. With the curve that goes out, you end up with a flatter bottom. With the curve that goes out, you end up with a... Uh, uh, it flares more here at the top and less so with the curve that goes in. So you could, that is something you can experiment with. But this is what I did on the speed model and what we're going to do here. Uh, again, you could keep these curves uh, if you would like, but I'm going to delete them. And we're going to use these curves to uh, create a, a base shape from which we'll make the ring. We're going to do that under the uh, surface tools. We're going to grab uh, this command here, surface from network of curves, or also called surface from curve network. And then we're just going to select these curves and the circle at top and hit enter and OK. Turn on shaded view and you can see what we've ended up with. Uh, I prefer to, in this particular case to have the seam at the side. And so if it isn't, you can select that surface, go under surface tools, and over here you can adjust the seam of a surface, and you could move it around. Like if, if you wanted it on the front, you could, you could do that. But we're going to leave it on the side. All right, um, solid tools. We'll click on that tab uh, in order to cap the top of this. And we may need, we will need uh, this shape in the future. So I'm gonna right, uh, with it selected, I'm gonna right click on the purple layer and click on copy objects to layer. Now I have uh, two of these objects. One of them is the purple one. But I'm going to turn off the purple layer for now. That's just something we, for us to use in the future. Going into the front view, uh, we're going to knock out the center for the finger. So I'm going to click on this shape here and um, on solid tools we'll click on the wire cut command and then we'll select the finger rail line, hit enter twice and if it it's going to delete the part that's highlighted in yellow so at this point we could just hit enter and it would go ahead and delete that that center like we want but if for some reason uh, you end up with this it would delete the outer part of the ring and all you need to do is just click somewhere on the canvas it doesn't matter where and it will keep inverting the selection uh, do that until you get the center uh, highlighted in yellow and then hit enter and it will delete that for you. Okay, uh, from this point, what we're going to need to do is uh, trim off the sides here. Uh, but we're going to do that in a part two of this video series. So, because uh, we're kind of we're kind of running out, I'm trying to keep these videos under 15 minutes, and I don't want to get too close to that to that limit. Um, now, if this is the kind of content that you like, you like seeing 3D jewelry design. Uh, I'm going to be doing this in Rhino and also in Blender if, if, uh, if I can. That's my goal. Um, I've got 10 years experience designing jewelry uh, with Rhino and also with Blender. And uh, I had to leave the industry due to some health issues. I've got arthritis in my hands and I'm developing uh, uh, something called ganglion cysts along my tendons in my forearms, my elbows, and my wrists. And the ones in my wrists are can get quite painful sometimes. So I can still do this kind of work, I just can't do it at the pace uh, required at my, at my job that I had. So unfortunately I had to resign. And so I'm gonna start doing these videos, that's what I've decided to do. Uh, I can stop whenever I need to and, and, and uh, let my uh, joints uh, recover. 
um, without worrying about any deadlines. But if this is this is the if my health will allow, this is what I intend to do: make videos uh, about how to make jewelry in in Blender and in Rhino. So if this is the kind of stuff you like, I'd love to have a, have your subscription. You know, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that, guys. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in part two.